this is um, your homework. If you weren't in class, this was the second slide. The first slide was this one, this one here. Um, the second slide, we finished that in class. Third slide, if you didn't have it, please copy it down. Oops, I thought I stretched these enough for kids to see, but obviously not this slide. Um, so just type it out. And um, one day goes here, this one goes there like that. And then the meaning is this and the rest. So if you did not type it, please type it, put it on pause and type all the meanings for these slides. This is what we did today in class. So anything uh, I've forgotten to type, I will take points off. So make sure you type everything here. All right, and we did that in class. And six period, unfortunately, six period, I forgot to go over what is a dependent variable. Dependent variable is the phrase for the y-axis, okay? So here's the y in yellow. I'll change that. Uh, I'll go ahead and erase this yellow here, and I'll change it to red, maybe. And then the y-axis, this, the y-axis right there. This phrase here, water level, that's the dependent variable. Um, that's the phrase that should be water level in feet. That's the dependent variable, okay? The independent variable is time in seconds. This is the other one. This is the phrase for the x-axis. Okay, time in seconds. That's the independent variable. Same thing on the next slide that I forgot to do was the independent, the dependent variable, which is the y number of credits, um, the number of credits, number of credits. I spelled it right the first time. On Ron's player cards. Okay, I'm going to make that smaller to fit it all in. There we go. And the dependent variable, I mean independent variable is the number of games won today. That's the dependent variable. The x, the phrase for the x is depend, independent. Independent is the phrase for x. The dependent is the phrase for y. Okay, that's important to know. All right. And this one we did in class. If you did not, if your work class did not get to do it, please copy it. Here's one that I didn't get to do for all my classes. Take your highlighter, use the yellow one, and highlight. Jesus initially had 850 in his saving account. Each week, that's important, he withdraws. That's important, $12 to pay for everyday activity at school. Write an equation. Equation is important to represent. The equation to represent amount of money Nathan let have left in the savings. Define each variable. So you need to let us know what each variable means. So let's start with 850. Each, each, anytime you see the word each per means time, so put a times right there, week, withdraw, withdrawal in this case is a minus, withdraw is to take out, so that's a minus, let's make that minus signs bigger for the word withdraw. Okay, with, it's a minus 12 to pay for everyday activity at school. Write an equation to represent them. Okay, so let's start with 850. Let's type in 850. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, we have $850. Um, minus, we're not going to time the week. We're gonna, this word minus is going to come first. Withdraw, with because it's withdraw, it's a minus $12. And then times each week, that's important, each week. So 12 times, he's withdrawing $12 each week. So times W, uh, minus 12W is there each week. W represents then 
W represents the number of hours, right? Um, number of weeks. Number of weeks, not number of hours. Number of weeks. Um, write an equation. So equal to equal to um, the amount of money. So amount of money left. So we'll put um, A for the amount of money. A that he has left. So A represents the amount of money in dollars. Or you can use total total amount of money something. Okay, that's the equation. Okay, what is the rate of change or slope? So what is the rate of change or slope and what does it mean? It's always, if you do additive inverse here, this is a plus negative, okay? The one next to the variable inside with the plus sign is the rate of change. So negative $12, okay? Negative $12 is the rate of change. Okay, and what does it mean? And it means withdraw of $12. See the word withdraw? Take out $12. That's why it's a negative if he takes out money each week. That's what the $12 means. The y-intercept, the y-intercept is this 850, it's the one without any variable. It's $850 is the money he has started out in the bank. That's the y-intercept. Okay, so next one, same type of problem. So here, a company pays $600 for each computer. That's important, this word each. Okay, each means times right there. Plus, oh, the plus sign's already given to, given to you. That makes it easy. Plus $880 in shipping charge. There's no word per, so 80 is by itself. Write an equation. So an equation here means equal. I'm going to type in equal there, big equal sign for the word equation using two variable to find we're equal to we they want to find here's the word to find the total cost so we're wanting to highlight the word total cost okay so we got 620 um times c times the computer plus the 80 dollars equal there's an equal sign after the 80, and then I highlight total cost. So I'm going to put C, for, oh, I'm going to put T for total cost, not C because I had C for computers. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, and I'm going to define each variable. Well, C is the number of the computer um, that the company is going to buy. So I'll just put number of computer, and T represents the total cost. And of course we're talking about dollars, so you need to put that dollar sign there. Which one is the rate of change? The rate of change is the side of the plus sign. It's the one with next to the C. Okay, so it's $620. Go back and look at what it means here in the word problem. It's um, $620 for each computer. Okay, the y-intercept is this 80, which is $80. And that $80 is, go back to the word problem, it's a shipping charge. This $80 from here, the shipping charge. OK, 
Okay, next slide here. Um, okay, the independent variable is the phrase for all the number that represent x. All these number represents x. So that is, let me see what that is. I'll undo it, type it in. Um, number of games Ron won today. I'm going to go back, size it smaller, keep red because it's easier to see when I'm looking through it all if you're not. Okay, and then the dependent variable are all the y's here, the y term right there, right there. Okay, I'm going to undo it so I can see. Okay, and that says number of credits. on Ron's player card. Okay, and that's the dependent variable. That's all the y, the phrase for the y. These number all represent y. And these are your x number. These are your y number, x coordinate, y coordinate. Okay, find the slope and explain what the rate of change mean. Again, slope and rate of change means the same thing. That's why I use it interchangeably. Okay, when you see the word slope, you should think of y minus y, which, okay, the change in y over the change in x, okay, x over x. And the correct way of saying it is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I'm going to make this sizer a lot smaller and type in the 2 and the 1, x sub 2 and x sub 1. That means you use, choose two ordered pairs. You can choose anything you want. I like to choose the top two. Okay, I'm going to choose 0, 1, 20, my first one. 0, I'm at 0 represents, this is important, 0 represents the number of games Ron won. This is the same as the one we did in class, huh? Am I doing the same thing over? Okay. Well, anyways, you're going to fill out this. I accidentally gave you the same slide again. So I still need you to type it out. Even though I gave you the same one as we did in class. See if you remember it without me having to explain it. Okay. Um... If you do remember, great. If you don't, here's what we did. Zero is one of the points, and it's the game's one. So a zero represents the games he's won. That means he's won zero games. Uh, one, zero games. And how many credits does he have in there already? He has 120 credits on his card, even though he didn't win any. Okay? And then another one I'm going to do, I'm going to use that in blue. I'm going to do 12 games won and 216 credits. So Ron won 12 games. He got 100, 216 credits. Okay, I'll just do it. Because this is my second point, I'm going to put it on top. Hold on, let me move this to the bottom. And I'm going to label this so I know that this is my second point as y sub 2. I'm sorry, sorry, guys. This is x sub 2, and this is y sub 2. These are my y numbers, the credits, and my x numbers are the games 1. So when I go back to the equation here, the, the credits I'm going to subtract, so 216 Cre credits minus the 120 credits, okay, and these are all credits, type in credits because they want to know what it means. Okay, I know it should be plural, but saving space here. Um, over 
the bottom one is the number of games won, 12 minus 0. All the x's, 12 minus 0, and those are in the number of games won. Okay, and that you get, um, you can use a calculator. Where's my little calculator? Oops, I don't have it. Um, that's 80, 96, 96 over 12. Your slope, letter M, equals 96 credits. Okay. Over 12. 12 what? 12 games won. Okay, so when we reduce that, what does that mean? We can re divide it by 12. We get um, 8 credits. We get 8 credits. And that's the same answer if you, I'll show you in a minute, 8 credits for every one game Ron played. Let's put one game. I need to put um, anything else. Let's change it to red so you can see that better as your final answer. If you go back to that slide, I use a di we use a different number in class, I believe. No, maybe not. Hmm. Oh, we did it in a graph form. See the graph form? Here's the graph. I think that's Ron. Even though we use different numbers, we came out with the same answer. That's why this was a graph. So you need to do the um, the the table. It's the exact same answer, even though we use two different points. One is a graphing, and one is a table. And when you use two, doesn't matter which point you use, you're going to still get the same answer in the end. Okay. That was my, I think that's what I wanted you to see when I was doing this. Okay? To two different representation of the same thing. Okay, so what's my y-intercept here? Remember what y-intercept? You follow this y, the y coordinate. You go all the way down. The y-intercept is right there. Um, at the bottom, that's zero. Oh, well, we'll leave it that big. <laughs> B equals to zero. The y-intercept is at zero. If you want it bigger so you can see better, there we go. B equals to zero. Sometimes too big, right? Let's put it there. Okay, finding the slope. My gosh, that little dot is way too big. It's bothersome. So I'm going to go back and size it smaller and put it. That's my Y. Oh, why is it so big? I thought I made it smaller. Okay. Right there. That point is zero, zero. You can always use the your Y intercept. Okay. So your Y intercept at the zero, 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 what? One of the zero represents zero hours. The other zero is zero miles right here. Too many yellows, right? I'll use a different color. Um, let's say pink. This is zero hours. This is zero. This is why I don't use pink. You can't see it. Miles if you highlight it. Okay, so your coordinate is zero, zero. So zero, our first zero is hours. Okay, zero hours. And the other one is zero miles. Oops, parentheses. Let's put that in much smaller fonts. Okay, so that's our point number one. Our point number two, this is point number one, zero, zero. Point number two, let's try one. I go up one, I can't, there's no number. I go up two, I can't, there's no number there. I go up three, nope. No number there. I'm not estimating. I'm going up four. Oh, not quite. Hmm. Can't work with that one either. Go up five. Yep, right in that corner. I'm using five right there. Five works. It's not a very good one. I did my best picking out the graphs for you. But four doesn't quite work. It's not quite in that corner. Okay, don't choose four goes up to five. 
has to be an exact spot. Okay, all these work. Let's erase that. Oh, I should make the eraser bigger. So it doesn't take forever to erase. Yep, there we go. Anyways, that's 5 and 320. 5 hours. This is 5 hours. So we'll type hour, 5 hours. Hours are 5. And the distance is 320 miles. 20 mile. Okay, so anytime you see you need that because the question asks you to find the slope, I mean, I, I should do yellow. Slope is, slope is always equal to y minus y, y, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x minus x or x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, and you would get y, the 2 sub first and the 1 y sub 1 sub 1. Okay, so I'm going to use this. This is my second point. I'm going to move that on top. And I'm going to label that so I know that that's my second point, x. Okay, I'm going to let everyone know what type. That's my second choice. And then this is y. And that's point number two. Okay. Um, so this is. Okay. So I'm going to subtract my y's with each other. These are my y's. 320 miles minus zero miles. So um, I'm going to. 320 miles minus zero miles. These are miles. Okay. And then the other one are hours, the x are hours, so 5 hours minus um, 0 hours, okay, and these are hours, okay, and then you got that for your, your x's. So your answer is the slope, we have used the letter m, you can do that instead of the word slope, is equal to... 320 miles, because that's miles, over 5 hours, okay? 5 minus 0 is 5 hours. Let's reduce that. That can divide evenly. It's 80 to 84, okay? No, 64. So, yeah, 64. You would get, you can divide that evenly to 64 over 1. You get 64 miles over one hour. Okay, one hour. So what does it mean? It means that you traveled, or this person traveled, 41 miles for every hour, or 41 miles per hour. 41 miles for every one hour. Okay, I'm going to change it in black, stretch it out, and put it right here. Not hours, just hour, single, okay? Dependent variable, dependent variable is time and, uh, no, dependent variable are the X phrases. So distance traveled, so distance travel. Okay, I'm going to make it red, so in, in what? Distance in miles. Okay, don't forget the word miles that we've typed in there because they're traveling in miles, not feet. Okay, over time in hours, the independent variable then is time. It's the x in hours. Okay, that's the independent variable. Right, then you finish your slide. I am posting sorry right after 12 um, and ending it.